from the USOC goes to running the organization, mostly, and a little bit goes to the top athletes. Very, very few athletes. Maybe six to seven long trackers, max, get some money. Okay. And same with the short track. And the two highest paid uh, uh, USF. employees at U.S. Speed Skating make more money than is given to the skaters in one year. That's combined, or, correct? Combined. Combined. And it, uh, I, I'm just giving that statistic, and it can be hurtful to some people, but, and I understand that there's difficulty in raising money for a sport that is not like skiing, where you can advertise something that yeah, the public the sponsors, uses. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So you're going to have some trouble with that. But that is the bottom line in the development of this sport is to bring in enough money and we need people who will bring in that money. And right now, all the money comes from the USOC and the USOC is not happy about that. Um, the USOC wants our organization to raise its own money to supplement what they give. They do not want all the money to be coming from them. Although I do believe that the American public should know that very little money that they contribute, their dollar that they give on their tax form or whatever, wherever it comes from, um, is so trickled down by the time it gets to the athlete, they'd be very disappointed. So let's just say out of every dollar, are you saying maybe 10 cents to the dollar goes to the athlete, 20 cents after all the administrative costs to less run the organization? I'd say less than that. Okay. Now at and one point, was there money coming in the U.S. speed skating back in the day, 15, 20 years ago? Uh, no. No. no, not necessarily. I mean, I think that's been the failing of the organization is to raise a good amount of money to really develop. And here, let's go back to development. What is development? Um, development is uh, taking your clubs and helping the clubs with any finances or resources they need to keep going to keep skaters interested. And there just isn't enough money at that level. And what happens is that Everybody sees this sport, at the end of the sport is the Olympics. Now people rarely do it recreationally. It's really, if just like the inliners come to speed skating because speed skating has the Olympics, inlining does not. Yeah, because for so, them it's right. either you keep on going on the World Cup of inline, mm -hmm. might race for a couple more years and then call it a career, or you try to make the Olympic team. Correct, and that's the attractiveness yeah. of speed skating. Now, uh, I'm jumping a little bit here because I'm forgetting my train of thought, but um, U.S. speed skating has survived, and is con and people will say, "What are you complaining for?" Because there's so much success in speed skating, because we always happen to have somebody who wins, and it justifies the existence of the organization to the U.S. Olympic Committee because we bring in enough medals. But those medals are brought in often, and in the past, it has been it's come from development from speed skaters who started in the clubs. It's not that anymore. It's from inliners. And if There's you been a mass from, exodus of, exactly. in, I mean, look at Joey, look at Brittany, look at Heather, yeah. Casey. Right. And then and, and that's because, you know, the, there has not been enough money and development going into the sport of speed skating itself to bring these people up. The US, oh, speed, U.S. speed skating right now gravitates towards a successful inliner or a successful something. They will not look at their... The, 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 the roots and say, hey, we need to take 10 years and develop these people. The people who are in charge are so worried about their medal count that because they have to um, report to the US, USOC, ultimately Olympic success. What was the, so, what was the prediction for Sochi? What were they we're predicting? Jumping, we're jumping big here. Let's, let's hold on. Let, sorry, sorry. Yeah, remember that. Uh, no, I, I So, will. So, will. so let, let's just say what's happened then, I contend that if you kept your good skaters at the club level for more years, what happened years ago when the Amateur Skating Union dissolved, it there was an attraction for the skaters to go right to a high level. So they siphoned in short track all the good skaters at the age of 14 out of the clubs. So then the clubs were void of great skaters and the, the interesting thing about speed skating is people love to come to clubs because you had great skaters skating at a club session. Now all these people are siphoned off and the clubs are struggling to attract because there's no there's no money in it, there's no real development in it. Now all the great skaters are all, all go to Salt Lake City you know, for 
training and there's only a few great ones relatively speaking and so you can't develop if you don't have the resources nor the attraction at the club level you know to keep developing and people just quit there's other sports that are easier for parents to take their kids to or to wait through it or whatever parents don't like you know to go th and, and the equipment and there's a, there's a lot of downsides to the sport relative to the ease of swimming or basketball or baseball it, it's or not other a cheap things. sport and, to get involved and, right and it's not a yeah. school sport yeah so the the organization never really did any major studies and i know that takes money as to what is happening and how do we keep the growth going they didn't have to because somebody always comes out of the woodwork and now it's more the inliners to bring success to us speed skating to justify it to the us olympic committee which the U.S. Olympic Committee does understand that there is a problem there, but you ha we have to understand that everybody's looking out for their own back. And so the people in charge at the USOC as well as U.S. Speed Skating are most concerned about who are people who are going to give us medals in the next Olympics. And they will coddle those athletes and anybody who is not medal potential, they really... I don't know if you want to call it ignore, but very little attention is given to them. Because they write they them say, off in theory. Right. So yeah. only the people they know can for sure give us a medal, they will coddle. But they're not the ones who need the support. You support some of those skaters who are on their way up, and they will become medal potential. And they do not see that. We have a lot of medal potential, relatively speaking, to the numbers we have, mm -hmm. uh, You know, ratio of medal potential of the skaters we have, we have them there in our development of in speed skating, but the the USOC does not understand this as well. And US speed skating will only go to those. I will mostly go to the ones who are already good, because it's an easy win, and they're only worried about that four years. They're not as concerned about the future. Now it is coming more to their attention. There's a little concern for it because they see how much it's dying, but not a lot is being done about it. Well, if you look at the next coming Olympics next year, there's a lot of athletes that will probably retire because people are getting in their late 20s and their early 30s. Yeah, we, we say that, but these people, well, people are coming back. They always, they retire for a year or two and then they come back. So we will still, and you know what the average age of a great, successful speed, uh, speed skater is, used to be 19, it is now probably, I, I estimate in my survey head that the... Uh, <laughs> That the average age is is the late twenties now. I would say because the Dutch are winning strong in their late twenties and early thirties. Yeah. I mean, look at what the last Olympics. Yeah, well, they and it'd be well, they have professional. It's professional in in Holland, and so people can continue doing it as a living. There's many of many of them are married with children, and yeah, and that's it, one of the life. things I, I want right. to bring up with you. Like over here, it's it's an amateur sport. Over mm -hmm. there, it's it's a way of life. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been to Heron Bain yeah. twice. There's 15,000 screaming Dutch people in orange over right. here. You go to a World Cup, you're lucky if you get 100 people. They would well, literally and, take and kids it's, it's, at, in Salt Lake. They literally well, take kids and bust them in yeah. for the World Cups. Well, it, it's understandable, though, because in Holland, it's aside, next to soccer, mm -hmm. uh, it's the national sport. Here in the United States, take football, take basketball. Take well, all people, three combined. The people, they're, they're crazy. Uh, the Americans are crazy about that. But that's because it's that's basically our national sports. So unless we are willing to organize um, speed skating, like <coughs> bless you, <coughs> bless you. Unless we are willing, <laughs> unless we are willing to organize uh, speed skating like we do football or basketball, we're of course not going to have that success level. So we understand it, it, it's a it's a fact. It's never going to change that it, the speed skating is going to be a an attractive sport to the spectator in the United States because we already have our big sports. Holland has soccer and speed skating. So we can't expect it and we have to understand that there's going to be more. How, what professional basketball or football teams can compete with the United States? None. Can our speed skaters compete with the Dutch? Well, yeah, we can. Yeah, we can. A few of them can. You know, we don't have the numbers because our organization, in my opinion, uh, has not been skater friendly enough, nor raised the money, nor given the resources to that, as it is in government and the <laughs> world, to that middle person.